Let's face it guys, grocery prices have skyrocketed lately. Recently, a Reddit user shared this flyer from Loblaws from back in 2019. And as compared to today, you can see the price of most items have almost doubled. We are all anyway struggling with inflation. But the shocking fact is that Statistics Canada revealed in December that Canada's annual inflation rate is 3.4%, but the food inflation rate is 4.7%. Up until a few months ago, I was spending around $200 a week on groceries alone. However, I was able to cut down my grocery bill to up to 50% by following these strategies. So in today's video, I'll be sharing the top 10 grocery shopping hacks that no one's talking about. By the end of this video, you will be armed with knowledge that will not only keep your wallet happy, but also ensure that you and your family are having healthy, nutritious meals every day. And in the end, I'm also going to give you a bonus tip that I learned from my own experience of working part-time in a grocery store. So make sure that you stay till the end of the video. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. My name is Sophia and welcome to my channel, Sophia in Canada. I make videos every week about how you can move to Canada, how you can build a successful life for yourself in Canada and about life in Canada in general. So hit that subscribe button now and let's get started. So the first thing that you need is to have a plan. Before you go for your grocery run, make sure that you have a budget in mind. Ensure that you sit down and reevaluate your finances and assign a certain amount to your groceries for every month. This will help you exercise more control and ensure that you don't end up buying a lot of things just on impulse. Personally, what I like to do is I do like to give myself a little room to breathe so that in case there is some great deal or sale going on on some bulk items, I can stock up on stuff that's going to help me in the long run. For me, this works great and I think it's very helpful because when I don't give myself a little bit of extra breathing room, what happens is either I'll not pick up the item because I don't want to exceed my budget or I'll pick up the thing and I'll know in my head that I've exceeded my budget. And when you keep failing and exceeding your budget, after a while, you just give up. You feel that, you know what, even if I give myself a budget, I'm never able to stick to it. So better, let's not have a budget. And then you go down the rabbit hole. So it's always good to have a fixed budget in mind and decide that I'm going to give myself this much amount so that if there is a special deal or there's really something that I want to buy, I can buy that without the sense of failure that I've exceeded my budget. The next thing is that before you go and get your groceries, make a list, sit and plan ahead and think what are the meals that you're going to prepare in the following week and what ingredients do you already have in your pantry and what ingredients do you need. This really has helped me a lot because when I never used to plan my meals in advance for the upcoming week, I used to just go to the grocery store and pick up random items and then when I used to try and make a meal, I would realize that I've got most of the ingredients for the meal but I'm missing one major ingredient. And then you end up wasting time trying to figure out what else you can make or sometimes you're not able to use the produce that you've got from the grocery store. Additionally, I also feel that when you've planned your meals for the next week, it takes away a lot of stress and headache on a daily basis that what should I cook today? and really makes it easier to prepare home cooked meals. Another thing that really helps, especially if you're living alone or if you have a small family, is that when you're getting your groceries and your meal planning for the next week, think of a couple of primary ingredients that you can use up in different ways throughout the week. So for example, I can get chicken and broccoli. One day I can make a chicken and broccoli stir fry. The next day I can make a bowl of warm comforting chicken soup with steamed broccoli on the side. And the third day maybe I can make pasta with chicken and broccoli. Okay, this not only helps you reduce your grocery bill because you're getting lesser items, but also ensures that there is less wastage and you know you're getting stuff that you will be able to finish by the end of the week. Especially if you're someone like me who cannot have the same meal more than three times in a row, it really helps break the monotony and ensure that you're still enjoying the meals that you're having at home. Another thing that I've recently started doing and I actually have so much fun doing it and that is one day before getting new groceries, what I do is I give myself a challenge that today 
I'm going to make all the meals from what I already have either in my pantry and especially what's in my refrigerator. This process is not only fun, it helps you reduce wastage, use up whatever leftovers you have at home and thus help you reduce your grocery expenses in the long run. The next tip is a little controversial and I may ruffle a few feathers here by saying this but trust me, this is absolutely a game changer. After making this change in my grocery shopping habit, it's become so much easier to stay within a budget and get stuff that I actually need and like. And that is switching to online grocery shopping. Now, don't get me wrong. I love in-person grocery shopping. I love walking down the aisles, seeing the latest deals and offers, checking all my fruits and vegetables individually for freshness. But the harsh truth is that grocery stores are deliberately designed for impulse shopping. You will end up doing a lot of impulse shopping like getting snacks and munchies that you don't really need or buying excess of something just because it's on sale and by the time it's time to check out, you will see that you have way exceeded your budget. That's why I find online grocery shopping very convenient. Nowadays, almost all grocery stores have their online app. On top of that, there are grocery delivery services like Instacart and Voila through which you can order groceries. Personally, I really prefer the Walmart app when it comes to shopping from Walmart because when you're ordering online, it's much easier to stick to your budget. You can add items to your cart and play around to see how you can still stick to your budget or when you are exceeding your budget, which items you can remove to ensure you're still on track. And more than that, as you can see on the Walmart app, you also get to use all the coupons, something that I mostly miss out on when I'm shopping in person. You can shop from their weekly flyer section so that you know you're making the most of the deals Furthermore, it also helps you compare two items of different brands to see which one is giving you a better bang for your buck. And we all know with shrinkflation these days, we are getting lesser and lesser quantity for the same amount of money. So this is another reason why I really like ordering online through the app. Not only that, online grocery shopping saves you a lot of time. Most apps like Walmart or Instacart usually have an introductory offer wherein the first couple of deliveries are completely free of cost. So you end up saving money on that too. And moreover, Walmart usually has a delivery fee of around five to six dollars. But if you don't want to spend that money, another thing that I really like is their pickup option which is completely free of cost. So you can do all your grocery shopping and then all you need to do is go to Walmart, reach their parking and they will get all your groceries to your car. One of my major qualms when I first started ordering groceries online was that what if the meat is not fresh or what if the produce is not in the best state? I'm not sure of all the grocery apps, but Walmart does a great job at it. For example, recently I had ordered meat and when I saw the expiry date on the meat, it was expiring in like two days. So I called them up and they instantly refunded the amount. And they also advised that if at any point of time you see that uh, the meat is about to expire or you're not satisfied with the quality of produce that you've got, or you don't even have to call them. You can just go on their app, select the item and select initiate a refund and explain the reason as to what is wrong with the item that you've received and instantly they will initiate a refund for the entire amount. And personally, I have ordered from them for so many times. And I think this was the first time that I got something that I was not happy with. Usually they are very selective about picking up the right produce for you and ensuring that you are getting stuff with an extended shelf life. The next hack is to know what to buy from which grocery store, especially for a country like Canada where there is no concept of fixed prices. Knowing this is really going to help you save a lot of money in the long run. The majority of the stuff may be cheapest at No Frills or Walmart. However, you can get a much better deal or a much better value for your money in other places as well. For example, when you shop at Costco at bulk, buying things from Costco is way cheaper. Additionally, stuff like detergent for your laundry, fabric softener, cleaning supplies, sometimes they are so much cheaper when you buy them from Amazon. 
Also check out your local stores like your Asian supermarket or the nearby Indian store that you have. Not only are you supporting small businesses, but many times these stores have much better deals, especially when it comes to fruits and vegetables. The next strategy is to be flexible with your grocery list. When you get groceries, ensure that you are making the best use of the available store promotions or any deals that are going on. If it is something that can be stored and you know you are going to use it, buy it in bulk because that's going to save money for you in the long run. Also, for certain items, it's okay to get frozen stuff. You can get frozen berries and bananas that are great for smoothies. You can get frozen vegetables. Not only are these really handy when you have to whip up a quick meal, it's also very cost efficient because you're only using the exact amount that you need and not just using all of it because you're scared that it will go bad if you don't cook it in the next couple of days. Furthermore, it stays fresher for a much longer period of time. It has a much better shelf life. For many items like frozen berries or frozen spinach, the nutritional value doesn't really decrease that much just because it's frozen. See which are the items that can be frozen. For example, this is something I was not aware of coming from a country like India that a lot of grocery items, you can actually keep it in the freezer and it will stay a much longer period of time. So you can easily freeze your meat and it will stay fresh for a much longer period of time. However, always ensure that once you've defrosted the meat, you're using it within 24 hours. Otherwise, there are chances of food poisoning. You can also freeze other stuff like bread or, you know, make a paste of fresh herbs like ginger, garlic or parsley, coriander. You can just blend it into a paste put it in an ice tray and freeze it and it stays fresher for a much longer time. And whenever you want to whip up a meal and use these herbs, just pop out one cube from the ice tray and you have fresh coriander or fresh parsley always ready for you to use in your recipes. Another thing that I learned over time and that was really shocking is that sometimes buying big bags of produce is much cheaper than buying individual items. So for example, when I'm going to buy apples, sometimes I feel I don't really need a three pound bag of apples. Maybe I just need three or four. But when you compare, you will see that the three pound bag of apples, which has like 10 to 12 of them, costs you around $4. And if you pick up four individual apples, that will also cost you $4, surprisingly. So for items like apples, oranges, tangerines, onions, and potatoes, always compare with the bag sized options because most of the times they are much cheaper than getting individual pieces. And the final tip to save on your groceries is that you're getting cash back when you're buying your groceries. There are a lot of great credit cards that give you four to even 5% of cash back when you buy groceries. And I have made two detailed videos about the best credit cards in Canada, the ones with fee and the ones without fee. I'll leave the link in the description section below. Do check them out to see which one would be the best fit for you. Walmart also has its own credit card that helps you get good cash back when you buy groceries from Walmart. I've mentioned that in those videos too. A lot of grocery stores like Shoppers Drug Mart and No Frills have their own reward structure. For example, for Shoppers and No Frills, you can just download their app and you get PC Optimum points each time you shop from any of these locations. And then later, once you have enough points, you can redeem that as cash back so that your grocery bill is reduced. And the bonus tip is that always make sure that you do not buy pre-cut fruits and vegetables. No matter where you're getting your groceries from, they are always more expensive than the uncut ones. Because when you're buying pre-cut fruits and vegetables, not only are you paying for the produce, you're also paying for the manual labor that went into peeling and chopping and cutting the stuff for you. But more than that, the biggest reason why I say do not buy this is because as someone who worked in the produce section on a part-time basis in Farm Boy during my college days, you know what they do? They pick up the fruits that are about to be too ripe or they're about to go bad very soon or they already have some slight damage or some slight flaw in it already because they know that this is going to go bad soon and they cannot sell these items as is on the shelves. They'll chop up the bad portion, 
peel and chop up the slices and sell them in packs to you. And this is even from Farm Boy, a grocery store which I personally believe gives a lot of importance to the freshness and quality of their produce. So even if they are doing this, I can't even imagine what stores like Walmart or No Frills must be doing. Get Uncut Fruits is healthier, cheaper and fresher. And finally, ensure that you keep your ultimate financial goal in mind all the time to help you stay on track with your monthly grocery budget. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, share it with your friends and family. And also let me know in the comment section below as to what are your tips and tricks to save on your grocery bills so that I can use them too and save some money. We all need that in the current economy. And if you haven't yet, before you go, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching till the very end. See you in my next video.